This is the most affordable Wi-Fi 6 AX3000 3 nodes mesh system on the market today. It is the new Tenda MX12. In this video, we're going to open the box and I'm going to show you what comes in the box. And also, I'm going to show you how to set it up. And most importantly, I'm going to show you how to place the nodes so they will get an excellent connection to the main node. And this way, you can benefit fully from the capabilities of this mesh system. I'm going to also be comparing its speed and its range to a Wi-Fi 6 AX3000 router from Tenda. So let me start first by showing you what comes in the box. This is everything you get in the box. You have the three nodes, three power adapters, ethernet cable, and some documentation. For the ports and the controls, they are all on the back of each node, and they are the same between the nodes. You have the first button is for the mesh enforcement button. So in case the mesh doesn't work, you press this button from one to three seconds on the main node and on the slave node, and they will reconnect. This pinhole here is to reset the node. These three ports are one gigabits per second ethernet ports. This is for the one or the LAN, and this is a DC input. Let me show you now how to set up the mesh system. Any one of the three nodes can operate as a main node or as a slave node. So I'm gonna choose this one, and this is purely random. And you need to connect the ethernet cable that came with the mesh system to the modem of your ISP which I did already. And now you need to connect the other end of the ethernet cable to the lowest ethernet port here that says one and LAN. So let me connect it. And now you need to power the node. So I'm gonna simply connect the power adapter here. You have an LED light in the front. It will light up green first, and then it will blink slowly green so that it is searching for the mesh nodes. At this stage, you need to get the default SSID and the default password of this node, and they are on the bottom of the node. And when you get this information, you need to connect to this default SSID on your smartphone. So this is my iPhone. I'm going to search for the network. And here it is. It's called Nova YU7CA2. So I'm going to select it, and I'm going to put the default password. Now, as soon as you join the network, your smartphone will open a web browser to continue setting up the network. So all you have to do here is tap on start now and it will detect the internet connection and here it detected it correctly. So it is a normal connection, dynamic IP and it gave you a default Wi-Fi name and a default password. Of course, you need to change these so that your Wi-Fi network will be more secure. Never use the default Wi-Fi SSID or Wi-Fi password. So let me change them here and let's put an SSID that is KST, and this is, of course, for the purpose of this video only. And for the password, I'm going to also delete it. And for the purpose of this video, I'm going to put any password. Always use a very strong password for your Wi-Fi network. So now when you finish, tap on Done, and then tap on Save. And now it's giving you what you have put. And here, of course, the default network will be disconnected because it doesn't exist anymore. So we need to connect to the newly created network. So it is KST. So I'm going to put the password and connect to it. And here it is connected. The next step is to install the Tenda Wi-Fi application and launch it. It will detect automatically the mesh system. In case it doesn't detect it, press on the plus sign here and then select the mesh system. So here we need to select it. So here it's telling you a manual device is found. So tap on control now. This is only the first time. You need to put the password that you've put for the Wi-Fi. So it is the same for the login password for now. Once you put the password, tap on control now. And you see that for the time being, we have only one node, which is the controller. So now I'm going to show you some settings that it is better to do. So tap on the settings on the bottom. And you have the first setting I'm going to show you is the Wi-Fi setting. So tap on it here. And I advise you to dissociate the 2.4 from the 5 gigahertz bands. So this way you will know to what band you are connecting. So disable it by toggling this one to off. And it's going to create a 5 gigahertz network with the extension underscore 5G. It is okay by me. So now for the security, I advise you to put it on WPA3 for both bands. So let's put it WPA3. So select WPA2 here and then select WPA3 and then scroll and tap on save and confirm. 
and I'm gonna also show you the management password. So it's better for security reasons to make the management password different from the Wi-Fi password. So tap here and then here you can change the management password. For the sake of this video, I'm gonna keep it as it is. So now let's connect the two additional nodes. To connect the second two nodes to the mesh node, all you have to do is to power them on and for the first time for them to connect without any problem, you need to put them within three meters of the main node. After the LED light starts blinking green slowly, all you have to do is to wait for the nodes to connect to the controller and the LED light will light solid green and the operation might take a couple of minutes. Now that the three nodes are connected, let me show you how to place them optimally. The best placement for the node is that one node shouldn't be further than 10 meters than the other node and they will renegotiate the connection automatically. And the LED light in the front of the node serve also for a connection meter quality. So if it is orange, it means the connection is fair to the other node. It's better always to be green. And also if it is red, solid red, it means that the connection to the other node is poor. And of course, it's better to be green. Now, also if you have a two-story house, the nodes should be placed in a triangle. So you place the main node on the top or on the bottom, and you place the other two nodes like this in your house in the second floor. And this way you'll have the optimum connection. Now let's go and test the speed of this mesh system and also the range and compare it to the AX3000 Tender Router. To perform the tests, I connected my smartphone to the 5 GHz band of the mesh system and to the router. For the range test, the MX12 mesh system was still able to provide an internet connection speed of 2.7 megabits per second at around 70 yards out of my apartment. As for the router, it was providing only about 300 kilobits per second at only 30 yards. And here, of course, the mesh system is much better in the range test than the router. For the speed test, the MX12 mesh system and the router performed almost the same. I have an internet download speed of 500 megabits per second and the router was giving 600 megabits per second and the mesh system was giving 570 megabits per second and I repeated this test many times and the small difference in my opinion is the overhead of connecting additional nodes to the mesh system. So as you saw this mesh system from Tanda performed as expected. I like how it looks, it is elegant and also I like that it has a very good speed and very good range and it is an excellent value. Now I would have also liked it to have a USB port on the nodes so this way it will be more versatile. If you want to check the MX12 mesh system from Tanda, I'm going to leave an Amazon affiliate link in the description. If you make a purchase using my link, I will gain a small percentage at no cost to you and this will support my channel. If you liked my video, please share it, subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. I want to thank you all for watching. I'm Eloy from Knowledge Sharing Tech. See you in the next video.